This is on page 269 in your student journal. What we're going to be looking at is how do you graph a sine and cosine curve, not graph, but how do you come up with the equation of the graph if we're given um, a graph or if we're given a set of points. All right, so first of all, it's asking us um, for the definition of frequency. So frequency should be, I know, it's going to come up here in a second. One divided by the period, that's always going to equal the frequency. One divided by the period will equal the frequency. Okay, a sinusoid, this can be either a sine or cosine curve. So when it says to find the sinusoid, it's talking about the sine or the cosine curve. Okay, let's just go over the key points one more time for sine and cosine. You all have gotten pretty good with these. We think of our unit circle, we work our way around it. This point is 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So if I'm trying to come up with my five key points, I'm looking at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. What's the sign right here? 0. Next one? Next one? Then, and, okay. We notice how in the sine curve, the first, third, and the fifth are always going to have the same value. If these are not zeros, then it means that we've had a vertical shift, up or down. This is always going to be the amplitude. From here to here, what did we do? If we went up one, the amplitude's one. And then the, from here to here, this is always going to be the period right here. All right, for cosine, we're looking at our key points here. Okay, so we're looking now at the x's, so how are those going to go? So now we're looking for these two to be the same. When those two values are the same, we know it has to be a cosine curve. And again, periods normally 2 pi. Remember that the period is always equal to 2 pi over b. So that also means that b is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by the period. So these are two important things. All right, let's flip over to the back now. All right, so let's look at the back. We're going to do a word problem here. It says, um, an alternating current generator, an AC generator, converts motion to electricity by generating sinusoidal voltage. Assuming that there is no vertical offset and phase shift, the voltage oscillates between negative 170 volts and positive 170 volts with a frequency of 60 hertz. Write and graph a sine model that gives the voltage V as a function of time in seconds. All right. So when we're taking a look at this, they're telling us the frequency. So we know that the frequency is equal to 1 divided by the period. So if they tell us that the frequency is 60 hertz, we're going to do 60 equals 1 over P. And this will allow us to find the period. So 60p is equal to 1, so the period is going to be 1 over 60. All right. So 1 over 60 then, that means if we start at 0, we're going to end at 1 over 60 there. If I want to find out what these are right in here, I could, but it's really not necessary because I'm going to be able to find my B value without even finding all these X's. It might be helpful to look at my Y's. It says there's no vertical offset and no phase shift. So that means I'm starting at zero here and I'm starting at zero here. And if I'm starting at zero, I'm going to have to end at zero. 
It says the voltage oscillates between negative 170 and positive 170. It doesn't tell me what comes first. I'm going to assume that it goes negative 170 and then goes to zero and then goes to positive 170. It's not clear about that. So looking at these points, zero, 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 what kind of curve is it, sine or cosine? It's going to be sine. Now look at this. It goes from zero to negative 170. It's supposed to go zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. So what am I going to have to put in front? Not positive 170, but negative 170. So I'm going to have sine and then my B value. Well, I know that my B value is going to have to be 2 pi divided by my period. The period's 1 over 60. Okay, so what's that going to be then if I have 2 pi divided by 1 over 60? 120 pi, right. So then I'd have to have 120 pi x. And there's no shift up or down or anything. So that would be the equation. Questions there? All right. Let's look at this one now. We're trying to come up with a function for the sinusoid. I don't want you to be, de to be dependent upon the chart of values. I want you to be able to trace over top of this. That would be one period right there, okay? Now, if I know this point to this point, that's pi over 6. I know that this pattern is going to have to be that I start at 0, I go to pi over 6, and it has to be evenly spaced, right? So I would just keep adding on 1 pi over 6. 1 pi over 6 plus another pi over 6 is 2 pi over 6 plus another one. So there's 1, 2, 3, then I'd have 4 pi over 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have my 5 points. I'm going to do a couple of the y values. This y value is 0, this one's 2. I know the rest of them, but I shouldn't really need to write them. Once I see that this is 0, I know that's going to be 0. What is it going to be, sine or cosine? Sine. What's going to go in front of the sine? A 2, right? 2 has to go in front. Here's my period, right? <clears throat> From here to here. That's a distance of 4 pi over 6. What does that reduce to? So I would have to say B then is going to equal to 2 pi divided by that period of 2 pi over 3. Or I can do 2 pi times 3 over 2 pi. What's the B value going to be? 3. So 3x, and then do I have a shift up or down or anything? Nope, we just have that vertical stretch of 2. So that would be our answer right there. Questions? Okay. Yeah, Tyler? Um, during the um, chart, can you just simplify as you go? Or yeah. I, I just wanted to show how I'm adding on 1 pi over 6, 1 pi over 6, 1 pi, just like that. But yeah, sure. All right, let's look at num number 3. Do you have a question, Will? Number 3. Here's where we're starting. We go here, we go here, we go here. That would be one period right there. Okay, let's try to do this one a little quicker. So what kind of curve is it, sine or cosine? Cosine. Cosine. So I'm going to have to have y equals, and I know it's cosine. Now, cosine's supposed to go 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. So what am I going to have to have out in the very front? A negative. And what's the amplitude? 0.5. What's the period? 2. So to find b, it's going to have to be 2 pi divided by 2. So what's b going to be? Pi. Pi x. Do I have any kind of shift left, right, or up or down? No, so no C or D. There we go. Okay. I want you guys to do number five on your own, and then we'll do number four together. Raise your hand and put it down when you're finished.
couple more and then we'll talk about it. Okay, Ainsley, you were one of the first ones with your hands up. Can you explain it to me? Um, I got cosine because I know what the theory says. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the amplitude, I got this 3. Good. And then 2 pi divided by 3, which is also 2 pi. Good. So you just had 3 cosine x. That's it, guys. Some of you are making it harder than it needs to be. That's how quickly you should be able to come up with it. Okay? The only change here is in the amplitude. There's no change in the period. There's no left or right. There's no up or down. So all we had to do was worry about that amplitude or that vertical stretch. All right, now let's go up to this one. This one's a little tougher. You can write out the points if you'd like. I'd like to, for you to get to where you can do it without writing the points, but we can if we need to. Halfway in between this high point and low point, that's where the midline, also known as the sinusoidal axis, is. What's halfway in between 5 and 1? 3. So this is that sinusoidal axis right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do points for people who need it. So my first point then is 0, 3. My next point is 1, 1. This point would have to be 2, 3. This point they gave me is 3, 5, and my last point's going to have to be 4, 3. Everybody see where those points came from? I can just tell what they are. These had to be evenly spaced, and then these, I can see this repetition here. What's that tell me it's going to be? Sine. So it's going to be y equals sine. Okay, now the amplitude is how far it is off this sinusoidal axis, what that vertical stretch is. What is that vertical stretch? Two, but it's also supposed to, for the sine curve, it's supposed to go up first, not down first. So what do I have to put out in front? Negative. Then I have to find B, and I know B is going to be 2 pi divided by the period. What's the period? So what is 2 pi over 4 going to be? Pi over 2. Okay, and then I'd have to have an x. I'm not doing a shift left or right. If I did a shift, like let's say I went to the left one, then it becomes a cosine curve, right? And then how, what's my shift up or down? Of 3. I want to show you how I could check this now. I'm going to show you two things I can do. One thing I can do is I can go to my calculator and type this in. Okay, so I've typed it in. I need to set up my table, so I go to second window. My table starts at zero. It's going up by one. I'm going to double check my mode, make sure I'm in radians. And now I'm going to look at my table of values. See how all those points show up so I know my points are correct? Here's another way to do it. This is kind of cool. I can put these points in under my stat. This I haven't shown you in a while. You can go to stat, edit, and I can enter these points. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I can come over here. Did I have another? No. 3, 1, 3, 5, 3. And now what I can do is I can have my calculator come up with this. So I can go under Stat, Calculate, and this is going to be a sinusoidal regression. See right there, that sinusoidal regression? And look what it gives me. Um, you don't need to do anything with that. You just go all the way down here. And it tells me that it's this. Okay, this isn't great, though. Um... Because see how it is telling me A is 2 and B is 1.57. What is 1.57? Pi over 2. But look at this. Do you see what it's doing? It's doing a shift. Why do you think it did that shift? What, what does the shift make this? See how this is a positive 2 instead of a negative 2? But if we shift it? then it's not going to have to have the negative. That's what the calculator did. So this may not be a great way to do it, actually. Um, 
but just so you can see, at least you can check your D value, your A value, and the B value. The C, though, it might switch that up a little bit. All right. Um, let's do number seven together. And actually, let's do number six together, and I'll have you guys do seven. All right. So number six, it says the pedal on a bike wheel is seven inches long. The lowest point of the pedal is four inches above the ground. A cyclist pedals three revolutions per second. Write a model for the height in inches of the pedal as a function of the time in seconds. We're going to do in, uh, yeah, we're doing in seconds, sorry. Given that the pedal is at its lowest point when t equals zero. All right, so look, guys, if I have a pedal, let's say this paper clip is my pedal. It's saying that um, given that the pedal is at its lowest point at t equals zero. So here's the pedal at its lowest point. We pedal, it goes around like this, goes around like this, and it goes around. It keeps going around, right? Let's draw a picture here. So here's the pedal at its lowest point. How far off the ground is it? So it's four inches off the ground. What's this length? Seven. Okay, so when it comes back here, when I push it backwards, it's going to be at that point, right? And then as it keeps going around, now the pedal is going to be up here. As it keeps going around, now the pedal is going to be right here. And it keeps going so on and so on. Let's make a chart for the values now. And I'm just talking about the y values. Okay, at the very beginning, at zero time, how high is this off, off the ground? Four. Four. How high is it at its next point off the ground? Eleven. What about at its next point, how high is it off the ground? Eighteen. Because I do four plus seven plus another just seven. How high is it here? Eleven. And then how high is it at the end point? Four again. Okay. So looking at this pattern, is this a sine or a cosine? It's cosine. It's cosine because these two are the same, right? Now this is the tough part in this problem. They're cycling three revolutions per second. Okay, per second. How long does it take them then to make one revolution? One third of a second, right? For one revolution, it's one third of a second. I could find all these values, but it's not necessary, is it? Because what is that telling us? The period. How do I find B? 2 pi divided by that period. I multiply the top and the bottom by 3. What is it? 6 pi. Okay. What did we say this is? Sine or cosine? Cosine. Okay. Because of these. Um, let's look at the pattern. It's going up, up, down, down. Is that the way cosine is supposed to go? Look back. Cosine goes down, down, up, up. Right? This is going down, down, up, up. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I <laughs> said it backwards. This is going up, up, down, down. So what do we have to have in front? Negative. What is the amplitude? How far is it between these? 7. B is 6 pi x, right? And then plus how much? Not 4. Not 7. 11, right? These are supposed to be our zeros, so plus 11. That's that equation. Pretty tough one, okay? I want to see if you guys now can come up with number 7. The first two people who can figure it out, I'll give them some candy to. Figure it out. <laughs>